Cooper MMA. I'm Mark Gilston, this is my friend Brandon. And this evening I thought it would be interesting to look at attacks when you are inside someone else's closed guard. Now, um, it's a terrible position to be in um, because they have tons of attacks on you and a lot of control, particularly they have a lot of hip control. But there are a few strategies you can take advantage of um, usually they work m much better against uh, lower belts who are not quite so skilled, but sometimes uh, they can surprise you. So I have three attacks, which I will do occasionally when I'm in closed guard, when I'm in somebody else's closed guard. And uh, even if they don't work, they may get me out of the bad situation and turn things to my advantage. All right. So one rule, if somebody has you in closed guard, don't try and choke them, right? If I come in and choke, he's gonna attack my arms or he'll just laugh at me because even if I get a nice good cross choke, he pushes away with his legs and I have absolutely nothing. So we talk about don't try and choke from inside a closed guard. However, there is one choke and one only that I know of which actually can work. Now, in order to do this, I need a high collar grip on the same side. All right, I don't want to be crossing because he'll pull, pull me across and either get my back or put me in big trouble. Uh, but on the same side, now when he tries to pull across, I'm gonna stand up and post on that hand. The other hand comes into the collar, crosses over, and that is Tsukomi Jimei in Judo, the thrusting choke. So the reason it works is because I'm able to get forward and he can't push me off with his legs. That's why it is essential for this choke for me to get on my feet. So I come in, if he attacks the arm, I come straight up. It's almost a stack, which is fairly standard, but he's gonna try and push off with the legs or roll me over, All right? This hand comes in shallow, not deep. Shallow, I have to cross, and then here's the sternomastoid, I have to push that away, and I pull with the bottom hand. He has other reactions right? He may try and flatten me out here rather than, right, coming down with the arm. All right, I'm still going to come here. I'm going to post way out to the side. All right, so that's something you can play with. Um, doesn't always work, but it's a pretty good attack. And when he is trying to defend against it, as he tries to defend against the choke, it lets me out yeah. because I'm off on the side. Now the elbow is coming in and that in itself is a choke, but he, of course, he's not gonna stay there. He's gonna move out of the way. Yeah. And now I'm out of the closed guard. A lot of people like to cross their legs in closed guard. I think that's a mistake myself, but it's fine. I can feel it because there's a lot of pressure against my ribs. When they're crossing their legs, if you're very sensitive, you can tell which leg is on top, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to reach, I'm going to do a standard escape with the knee and the butt and turn to the side, but he pulls me, he's not going to let me out. I reach and <laughs> all right. Even if I don't get the top leg, this effect, this still will almost always get you out of the closed guard. All right. So once again, I feel that pressure. Knee in, I get my knee in as much as possible. Turn to the side. 
and reach. Now, if I have the far, far ankle instead of the high one, when I do that, it's an ankle lock. That's meaning I'm attacking the lower ankle, mm -hmm. right? The high one is just gonna get me out, but the low one is actually going to submit. You have to be very careful here. This arm is exposed. So, and that's true of the escape in general. So when I'm doing this move, the knee comes in, I want my pressure in the middle, preferably around the solar plexus, right in the middle of his sternum, and I push hard. So it's very hard for him to attack my arm here, mm -hmm. All right? So he starts working on it, but see that collar is helping me. Now it's easy to come and escape. And if he doesn't uncross his legs when he attacks, then I have the submission. Another escape comes from taking your knee from the outside bringing it up on top of his hip and uh, pressuring it by moving it across his body. So that's a nice escape, but there's also a hip lock that you can get when you begin that escape. So I lift my leg up, notice I'm in as close as I can get I reach across, but instead of posting, I'm going to push on his knee back in the opposite direction. So I'm trying to lock my elbow with my knee. Now when I turn, that is a really nice hip lock. Okay, so once again, I need to make some kind of space for this to work. It's okay if he's trying to pull me forward. I just need my butt to be back, all right? I'm gonna use my elbow to keep him from pulling me all the way in. And that's where I want it to be anyway. Elbow to the knee, turn. All right, so there you have three different attack strategies when you are in somebody else's closed guard. So play with that you may find that those are very, very useful tools. I certainly find them to be so. If you like the video, please click like and subscribe to our channel, Serio Cusenio, meaning maximum efficiency. If you click on the bell, you can get the videos as soon as they are posted. Thank you, Brandon. That hip lock was good. Okay. Yeah, so was the ankle lock. <laughs> yeah.